order the uh, broadband subcommittee for May 2021. Thank you all for attending. Normally, I'm 100% failure about keeping short meetings either at the town or county letter level, but um, we are gathered here today mainly as a subcommittee to recommend a contract to the EDC uh, committee as a whole, which is meeting at 5 o'clock today. Hi, Linda. Um, so we are, we have been and I have been looking at each one of the federal, state, and local uh, announcements on broadband and broadband funding. Michael Tucker and I have been uh, reviewing them all together and uh, trading resources. And while we see progress, nobody has actually pinpointed any of the particular uh, money pots towards broadband with any particularity or amounts. And that includes uh, at our town levels and county levels. I will say at the town and county level, there seems to be a lot of enthusiasm about approaching some of the broadband holes in the county. I, of course, would like to keep the discussion at the state level and have them write the checks first and save our money for PJ's other sources and uses. Um, but uh, we'll, we're going to keep putting that down. And one of the things we need to uh, help us when we get it a little bit more clarity on the funding resources is mapping uh, at a more granular level and a survey of the county's current broadband situation. And uh, in that regard, we've looked at two or three vendors and had presentations. And I will turn it over to Mr. Tucker to give us his recommendation on moving forward with a contract at this point. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you know, uh, a state law was passed uh, in this session uh, for a new state study to map out areas underserved by broadband uh, so attention can be focused on, on serving them. Uh, that uh, it was a uh, $3 million study will be conducted by the PSC with a report due and buckle up by May 16th, 2022. Uh, launching the study is one of the provisions of the internet access bill that provides the low cost service for those in need. Uh, we have uh, been looking at the gaps and the maps and the funding for, uh, as uh, Supervisor Riley has indicated, uh, and especially uh, as it's been included in the CARES Act and the Recovery Act. And we believe that it's critical to get ahead of the game so that uh, the, uh, under the, both the Broadband Committee and the uh, Economic Development Committee chaired by Supervisor Bury to get ahead of the uh, funding stream so that when it is announced, we're not trying to figure out how we would use it because those who would have a roadmap as to how they could spend the money uh, will be in a much stronger position in terms of accessing it when it begins to flow. Uh, we did uh, receive a proposal um, from MC Fiber Services. Uh, it's a group of uh, retired broadband and internet uh, telecom executives uh, who have uh, proposed that they uh, provide us with an executive summary, uh, Google Earth files with route maps for countywide networks, dwellings unserved by the 100 MB service level, and new construction required to fill gaps at that level, uh, a report on the broadband situation in each town, uh, identifying areas lacking service in Excel by road and census tract, a layer of Google Earth files will identify uh, those areas uh, they'll hold one public event in each town if requested for comments and input. They'll identify options for filling gaps in service. Uh, the report on the plan of existing service providers uh, will include plans to expand deployment by the incumbent providers, participation in the rescue plan grant fund, and detailed collaboration efforts to fill the gaps and a feasibility study of a regional open access network uh, serving healthcare education, library public service, and municipal locations in the county. Uh, the consulting team uh, has a vast experience in broadband solutions uh, and has offered to do this uh, for $30,000 uh, payable on acceptance of the study deliverables. The fee should be a reimbursement grant uh, with uh, a funded application. 
Uh, it's an eight-week proposal. Um, you know, it's kind of incredible, uh, but both uh, on some of the calls, uh, we've had uh, David Berman, uh, we've had Carl Atkins, we've had Robert Honey Honeywell, we've had Dave Finger, and we've had uh, Bruce Bonasak. Uh, they have indicated, as some of the supervisors who have participated, that uh, these folks seem to uh, truly understand what's needed and, and how to get it done. Uh, we also had a meeting uh, with a group known as NYSTEC, N-Y-S-T-E-C. Uh, we were introduced to them uh, through Assemblymember Barrett and uh, County Executive Mark Marcus Molinaro in Dutchess County. Uh, we participated in a uh, call with them. Uh, they have provided us, and I've shared with you, the scope of work for Dutchess County. They told us they would provide us a similar scope of work uh, if we wanted to explore the project with them. Uh, we had a conference call with them uh, two weeks ago, uh, members of uh, this broadband subcommittee, as well as uh, some of the other uh, participants. Um, their program is 10 to 12 months. Uh, they were going to do a desktop survey of uh, what's out there uh, already online from the FCC or the state broadband office. Uh, Don Metz has done that uh, for us and continues to update that uh, through the county planning department. Uh, and then they were going to come back to the broadband subcommittee and ask us to engage the individual broadband committees in each of the towns uh, to go out and get the data necessary to identify the gaps. Uh, we felt that uh, I think the consensus of the group was uh, not only was it going to take uh, 10 months or, or 12 to 12 months, it was going to be in the $60,000 range and that uh, these folks might be more valuable to us after we have the information. Uh, collecting the information uh, would be a lot easier uh, to try to identify it in eight weeks to see if it can be done. And, and if it can't, what has to be done next? But we have great confidence in the other proposal. Uh, you also may have uh, read in uh, the Register Star recently that uh, ECC, the group that the county had hired several years ago, uh, to uh, do a broadband study uh, has uh, made a proposal to provide a broadband broadband inventory analysis and implement a broadband availability uh, survey program for uh, Green County. Uh, they've also uh, proposed uh, and have a contract with Washington County uh, to do the, the same thing. Um, it's uh, a program that they have put together uh, that they also used in Otsego County. Uh, they collect data on existing fiber. They identify owners of existing networks. Uh, the mapping of the data is collected and put on maps and identif they identify underserved, unserved and underserved areas of the county through an inventory desktop analysis. Uh, they then uh, have a something they call the availability and adoption tool campaign. They're gonna go out for six to eight weeks and market a web link for people to go and self-identify where they have broadband. And I think we've all seen in the past, many of us don't really understand exactly what we have. Uh, and number two, if you don't have it, how do you go online to uh, identify that you are uh, underserved or unserved? Uh, then they go through a high-level network solution, uh, trying to identify after they analyze the data, and and then um, they uh, and and my understanding is that uh, once they finish the high-level network solution, after they identify the broadband coverage cost estimates, uh, they then uh, provide a schedule of electronic, they schedule an electronic meeting, they review the work and address questions. And again, um, that work is in the $63,000 plus range. Uh, and there's an optional cellular phone gap analysis uh, that is uh, offered in that package as well. Uh, again, we've had our, uh, you know, we've worked with them before. They're certainly a, a capable company, uh, but both uh, nice tech and ECC seem to be starting out with the desktop analysis that, uh, you know, Don has pretty well completed for us. We're also fortunate that two of the five 
providers that have the bulk of the service area, GTEL and Mid Hudson are local, and both uh, representatives of those companies have indicated uh, that they will work with us on this. Uh, I know uh, there has also been contact with Bill uh, Mulroll at uh, Consolidated, and uh, he's uh, retired, but he's a consultant to the company and is working to see what level of uh, support they would give us to fill in data uh, directly from their uh, reports. And I did speak at length with Kevin Egan at uh, Spectrum. I think he's under a little bit more of a corporate uh, structure of uh, being able to be helpful, but he offered to do his best. I know we've all worked with these guys uh, over time and Sometimes I don't think it's Kevin's fault. I think it's just the, the nature of uh, the company he works for. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I believe that, uh, you know, we could move very quickly. We could give the, if, the, if this group uh, approves, recommends it to the full committee. I think uh, CDC is prepared to move forward with these folks and get them started tomorrow. Uh, and in two months, we'll have a, a sense of where we are. And by then, uh, I think, uh, you know, there'll be, some regulate, regulatory uh, releases as to how the money will be spent, who will get the money, will it go directly uh, from the feds to the municipalities, will it go to the states, and at least we will have uh, you know, some indication as to what needs to be done. I know that there's a proposal by four towns uh, to Congressman Delgado for some of the earmark money that uh, is possibly uh, going to be released in each congressional district. Uh, and I think that there's also been in preparation of that report, some indication that uh, certain towns could be, you know, fully covered uh, at the 100 MB rate for under 100 grand. And so I think uh, the better we know where the gaps are and what the costs are going to be, uh, and recognize that there will be still be some places that will may never be able to uh, to to get it uh, for that last mile. Uh, we at least be able to move forward. So, uh, on behalf of the sub working committee to this subcommittee, uh, I would uh, like to propose that you approve the uh, thirty thousand uh, dollar study proposed by MC Fiber Services. Is there a resolution somewhere for this? Um, we're, we're the subcommittee, Shari, so it's really a recommendation to the EDC, which would have a resolution. And, okay. And, All right. Because Kelly needs the resolution by tomorrow if it has to go yeah. to finance this month. Yeah. Uh, and which uh, is, the, chairman, the chairman texted me uh, that, okay. uh, and we will get that. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. So as you may have heard, we worked with one of the companies in the past. I can be a little bit more blunt than Michael. Their results were not particularly productive at that point. That's part of the reason we ended up doing a lot of our own groundwork. Uh, the other company and, and several other companies that I contacted individually are looking to charge us for the work we already did that a lot of other counties did not do. The reason we did pretty well in the BPO funding in the first three phases is that we were ahead of a lot of our fellow counties in our in our mapping. It wasn't perfect by far, uh, but it was better than most other folks had. Uh, so what the vendors are selling now is are, is some work that groundwork that we already did uh, at the desktop level and Don, I think, expanded on that to a level using his uh, our contacts with our local providers and, and what we knew from the town committees already. Uh, this uh, look to the $30,000 contract to me is a belt and suspenders. I don't want to go into this funding season with this much money on the line and not have uh, rely only on our data and not have an objective look at it from the outside. I think this is the quickest way and the cheapest way to verify where we stand uh, and be able to update ourselves from when the BPO ended you know, a year and a half or so ago, pre-pandemic, I don't remember time anymore, could be two years. Um, so I think that's why Michael has made that recommendation to the subcommittee, but I will certainly open it up to questions. And one other thing, Michael, that we want to make sure of, I know in talking to uh, Congressman Del Delgado's office, we want to also keep in mind the shared services decision to be made or to be clarified with the state so that when these towns do get together 
and or do get together with the county that the shared services credit is still going to be apportioned to this effort. Okay. Trustee, we'll start with you. Hands up on uh, Google Meets. Yeah, um, so I actually don't have a question. I just have a comment. I know in some of our subcommittee meetings we were talking about, you know, where we're paying for this. I feel very strongly that this is a county expense. And although I very much appreciate Mike Tucker being such a team player and saying, you know, the, the you know, CEDC could potentially, you know, take this on. Um, I feel strongly that this is an appropriate expense, expense for the county, especially knowing that uh, much of our almost $12 million specifically can be used for broadband and this would be an allowable expense there. So, you know, if if Mike Tucker's organization is needed as, as a temporary placeholder pass through something like that, because we haven't budgeted for it this year, um, I, I'm comfortable with that, but I feel very strongly that the commitment needs to be from the county, that the county is going to fund this project. Great. Supervisor Bury. Yeah, um, my conversation with Chairman Morrell and with Mike Tucker, uh, dealt with this issue and Chairman Morrell said that the county will pay the pickup with cost. Whether it's a flow through to CEDC or they pay the bill directly, I haven't seen the contract, but uh, it is an expense that the county is going to cover. I appreciate that and I agree with both those viewpoints and if Michael can act as a temporary cash flow for us, that might work well with PJ, um, but we'll let those two figure out and uh, I look forward to hopefully getting reimbursement funding uh, to Michael as soon as possible if we have to go that route. But I agree well, we want to be sure way. that uh, you know, the, to the extent we preserve the uh, ability to get reimbursed out of the federal funding rather than the, the county money that we can do it this way. Yeah, we think we need to make sure, and PJ, if you would weigh in too, please. I mean, if it, if it comes out of CEDC uh, pocketbook, uh, would the Fed money then be reimbursing? Is it permissible for the Fed money to go back to CEDC? Or should the county pay it and it be a uh, receivable? I think, I, I think it's very difficult to determine at this point in time. There is money allocated uh, in the uh, American Rescue Plan or the stimulus money that we're going to get for broadband. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking for the counties, obviously, to expend money. Uh, they don't want it just sitting around. But I've been on webinar after webinar. The latest one was just about a 15 minutes ago that I <laughs> Nobody truly has exact answers on that yet. Uh, however, there is money there for broadband, but what it is, it is going to be, uh, it's complicated, but it's complex, uh, the whole plan itself. And it's probably gonna require uh, us to, to gain, or to seek some assistance, some professional assistance, both from the accounting and the legal perspective that we do not have yet. So. You know, a long story short, I can't answer you, Rob, at this point in time. However, I'm assured that there is money in there for broadband. I think yeah, Rob's question was more, is it a safer route for the, the county to be the contract vendee versus the CEDC? I would think so. But although in this uh, stimulus money, uh, we are going to be allowed the contract uh, with a third party, I would the CEDC, I would suggest that you contract with us and we can subcontract with the provider. That's correct. That way we're just we're reversing a contract. It may not be the direct right. contract. Right. Because we are going to be allowed to contract with uh, the um, like Mike's CEDC. But otherwise, I don't see how you could reimburse us if it was a direct county expense. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. And Any other questions on the yeah. vendors of... That if people have talked to Christian yet, you um, Well, Hillsdale is in uh, consolidated territory, and you had mentioned the other two, but uh, that you would be working with a retired individual, Bill Mulride. So I just wondered how confident you are that consolidated will be working directly uh, with this study and participating fully. Um. I know that um, Dave Finger had some conversations with Bill and Bill was going back to the company to uh, try to val validate that. But you know what these uh, consultants are talking about doing is to the extent that the mapping, which is in pretty good shape, doesn't show, doesn't have the answer. They're gonna get in the car and uh, got about a couple hundred hours of uh, uh, 
time for someone to go and actually physically look at polls to see what's out there. So it's based on the fact that no one's going to help us. Uh, and to the extent that we can get them to help us, it will make it go quicker and more reliable. Bill's not under the gag order that our contact at Spectrum is under. Um, that said, Consolidated has been more aggregate and generic in their data sharing yeah. than yeah. they are granular. And the reason I like this proposal over the other two was that it did have some legwork uh, budgeting to actually go look at installations uh, at the ground level versus trying to figure it out from the internet sphere. Thank you. So Chairman Riley, do we need a, a motion out of this subcommittee to send it on to economic development or will it all be done there? Well, what we need is a recommendation so Chairman Bury can say that the expert committee on this met with uh, representatives of the county, that the representative of the county outside of the Board of Supervisors did speak to these three vendors. Um, those recommendations were brought back to this subcommittee. The subcommittee is now recommending to the EDC this particular vendor. So I would do an informal vote to see if there's any um, objection to recommending the this particular vendor to the EDC as a whole. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, recommend to the Economic Development Committee uh, Mr. Tucker's proposal as presented today. Thank you, Trustee. I will second that. Is anybody uh, against that recommendation? So, Robert, you have a full recommendation of the subcommittee to go forward with the contractual process. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We have uh, five minutes to spare if anybody else, okay. else wants to talk broadband. Otherwise, we'll give everybody a bio break before the we link back onto the same link for the EDC. I just want to thank you all for your hard work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you, Mr. Tucker, especially. You spent the most time on this. All right, so Mark, you're going to be doing the resolution for this? A supervisor not would say it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you're going to do the resolution for this? Yes. Um, yeah, we won't have it written for the uh, EDC. Not for the we'll next meeting, it, but for uh, finance. Uh, by tomorrow for uh, Kelly and uh, Sherry. Come on, Mike, you've got five whole minutes. You can't get the resolution up and... I, I can dictate one in that time. <laughs> yeah. I, I can, but you know, I may have something else I need to do before that. Thanks, guys. All right, Should we stay minutes, right on this link, Supervisor Beery, or it's a different link? I thought it was a different link. It's a different link, yes. Okay, thank you, okay. Sherry. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Motion, motion to uh, adjourn. Can I get a second? Ron. All in favor? Aye. Without Aye. objection, so ordered. <laughs> Thanks, Ron.
waiting for May 2021 water. And Mr. Tucker, please. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Um, I included in your packet uh, a link to our 2020 audit. Uh, UHY is uh, Urbach Hacker Young, which is the successor, successor firm to Patterson Kosky. Uh, they conducted an independent audit of CEDC uh, for uh, through December 31st, 2020. Uh, our assets uh, were at 3.6 million, uh, increase of 66,000 over the previous year. Our total revenue was 893,000, but we had expenditures of 1,170,000 uh, and uh, for a uh, negative operating balance uh, or uh, negative operating net income of $277,000 compared to a positive $595 the year before. Uh, the reason for this uh, was primarily because we were not able to book the $68,000 in PPP money uh, that uh, we had received uh, against our expenses for 2020 because the, the forgiveness wasn't until January of 2021. Uh, and so uh, when you and we also increased our loan loss reserve by a hundred thousand. We've got a, a very good loan portfolio, but we felt not knowing what we were going to be going into uh, this year, in terms of uh, our two point six million dollars uh, loan portfolio, where we have a million eight out on the street. We increased the loan loss reserve, and the accountants make you take that as an expense. So when you and then, as you recall, our budget for twenty twenty started out with a $60,000 loss because we were going to use a third of the funds from the land sale uh, for the uh, DNJ project uh, to balance the budget uh, in accordance with our plan that we set up when that sale was contemplated that we would use $180,000 equally over three years uh, to uh, provide additional operating funding. So we, when you make those adjustments, uh, we had a loss of 48,000. And when you look at the fact that we put a million three on the street uh, in terms of uh, COVID relief, uh, and uh, we contributed, uh, you know, funds for other grants, uh, we felt that uh, all in all, under the circumstances with COVID, we were able to continue to operate and, uh, you know, do a, a, provide a strong service, and we can, uh, you know, we'll work to get back that money in over time as we. Uh, get additional grant funds and uh, be able to uh, make that up. But, you know, we, we felt that uh, when you look at that 277,000, it looks like, uh, what were they doing? But when you look at the uh, adjustments, I think it tells a, a much clearer story. Um, the full audit is there for your review. Uh, and uh, a lot of the grant money was not, uh, it was done through fiscal agency agreements. So it, it didn't hit our income or expense uh, anyway, because we were we we're doing it as a uh, as a service. Are there any questions on the audit, <clears throat> Mike? I just want to say that you guys, CEDC, did a tremendous job during the course of this pandemic. We had no idea where we were going in the beginning, but uh, you steered the ship, and uh, you and your staff uh, did a commendable job. So thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a team effort, and uh, we truly uh, have a great staff, and they've uh, everyone stepped up and everyone worked uh, extra hours and made it happen. Uh, with respect to our finances for uh, through April of 2021, 20, uh, um, we're on budget uh, for expense for income. Our expenses look a little off because of timing. You know, early in the year when you have memberships to uh, groups like Patterns for Progress or the Chamber, uh, we uh, you know didn't actually uh, do the monthly budgets to time the payments. And we also have uh, $63,000 in PPP money uh, this year that we haven't booked. So we're very fortunate to be able to qualify for both uh, 2020 and 2021 PPP and to the tune of uh, about $125,000 between the two years. Uh, if there are no other questions there, uh, we can move uh, to the commerce part, but uh, if there's any finance, uh, here's our annual report. I did provide that in the packet as well, and uh, we uh, 
can send, we'll send you out a, a link uh, to that so you don't have to go dig for it. And if you want to share it in some of your e-news or other uh, channels of communication, it's, it would be great. Are there any questions on the finances? Uh, on the Commerce Park, our board approved uh, and our chair will be signing the easement uh, for the county for uh, the county sewer easement. We did have to uh, submit that to the authority budget office before we can transfer any any land, and uh, that uh, time frame is up. So we will get that signed and over to uh, Rob Fitzsimmons' office uh, this week. Uh, we did have, as you recall, an offer uh, on a land sale for lot eight. Uh, we just uh, were advised on Friday uh, that they're not they they did pay for two option extension periods. Uh, they're not going to pay for the third, but uh, they do believe that the developer believes that the company that's looking for the project will come back to us. So, you know, it will be back on the market uh, for someone if they show up. The good news is, is that when you go through this process, you get everything ready. And, you know, we now know what uh, we have marketable title, we have a title report, we have a survey. So, you know, if uh, it wasn't, uh, and they paid us over ten thousand dollars in earnest money uh so that uh we would hope that they would be the ultimate purchaser but uh if if not uh we're in better shape than we would have been not having had the opportunity to work with them uh for a potential sale so we'll keep you posted uh on that as uh, as we move forward you will need to approve as will the full board uh the transfer of that property to us when we have a, a final uh uh purchaser uh, and a proposed contract. Are there any questions relating to the Commerce Park? Um, with solar projects, uh, we certainly are all aware of Hecate and uh, both the CEDC board and the IDA board are aware of the county supervisor's unanimous resolution uh, re relating to that project. Uh, we have continued uh, to assist the county uh, with pilots on smaller projects in communities and towns where they uh, have received uh, planning board approval uh, on the theory of uh, if they're approved at the local level, uh, they, we can move forward in uh, coordinating pilots uh, where the communities have not opted out. These are not pilots that would go through the IDA. They, these would be direct pilots with the taxing jurisdictions where the developer gave 60 days notice and the, and the communities or taxing jurisdictions indicated they wanted a pilot. Uh, we've done uh, three for East Light, one, two for Eden Solar. East Light, uh, they have projects in Ghent, Claverick, Livingston, and now they have a proposed site. Uh, I think they also have one in Kinderhook and they have a proposed site in Stuyvesant. That's a, a larger project. The previous projects were all five megawatts. Eden Solar has two five megawatt projects in, in uh, Claverick. Uh, Borrego, they have a single project in Claverick, but in the middle of uh, getting their approvals, the, they sold the rights to that site to a company called Nexamped, and we're doing a little more due diligence with them before. Uh, and generally, uh, and Seaboard Solar is a, is a project that's uh, goes across the Stuyvesant Kinderhook town line. And uh, I've been in touch with the, both supervisors there as well. What we've done on represent, in terms of representing the county on these pilots is, is we wait until the two other jurisdictions have signed so that we don't get out ahead of uh, uh, the, the local approvals and the home rule uh, guidance for the uh, projects. Uh, we've also had, uh, you know, just in projects in general, uh, you know, we're getting a, a heavy flow of calls. Uh, there's uh, two new potential hotel projects in, in Hudson. Uh, we've had calls uh, for uh, additional uh, development throughout the county. Uh, I think, uh, you know, as we've seen with, uh, with the home sales and the sales tax uh, and uh, our unemployment, you know, we're, we're still the we're number two behind Tompkins County with the lowest unemployment. Uh, so the recovery here has, has gone strong. On the sales tax side, the April numbers show uh, January to April, 
uh, $15.4 million in sales tax, which is up 21% from last year uh, for those four months at $12.7 million. Uh, so that's a $2.7 million increase. If, uh, you go back to 2019, uh, the sales tax for, in Columbia County for those four months was 11.8. So we're 3.6 million ahead of uh, 2019 for those four months. And we're uh, 2.7 or 21% ahead this year. Uh, on home sales, uh, you know, the, the, the numbers are also uh, you know, quite impressive. Um, the number of um, new listings uh, is up 76%. So people are starting to realize that uh, there are buyers out there. And uh, so just in April alone, uh, new listings last April, last year was 60, it's 106 now. Closed sales uh, were up 35% in April, 48, 48 closed sales last year, 65 closed sales this year. Uh, the big issue is that the median sale price for April, uh, which means it could be skewed by one or two large sales this month, went from $250,000 last year up 62% to $405,000 this year. Now, again, uh, it's a one month snapshot, but you know, it really raises the ongoing issue that we've discussed at this committee with respect to uh, affordable housing uh, in, in the county. Uh, the number of homes for sale right now is down 41% from 603 on the market last year to 353 this year. And uh, so, you know, I, I think uh, it, it does help explain, uh, I think, uh, the fact that people the 4,200 plus or minus second homeowners did come up here and uh, have, have uh, used this as their primary residence as this was evidenced by some of the uh, migration reports from the Postal Service, uh, but it also shows the uh, in incredible uh, activity in the, in the local real estate market, which I'm sure each of you as supervisors are, are seeing in, in your own, own communities. Um, if there are no further questions on solar or other projects, uh, we can uh, go to the broadband update. Um, at the broadband subcommittee meeting that was just held, uh, we uh, the committee did pass a uh, informal resolution to recommend a vendor to this committee to assist with mapping gap gap analysis. Uh, Chairman Riley, did you want to uh, introduce the concept uh, from the committee's perspective? Sure, Michael. Uh, in a, I think most of us were there, but for those who were not, we reached out to three potential vendors, one who, which we had used in the past, one which was recommended um, by Dutchess County, and, and one that uh, we were locally recommended. Uh, we had the public um, members of the broadband subcommittee with us during those calls and proposals, not just the supervisors, we had our experts and those representing the town uh, broadband committees. Uh, the result of that is we found that uh, two of the vendors were selling uh, services that we had already accomplished in-house through Michael and Don Meltzer's efforts over the last few years when we were working with the broadband program office. And the one that we're recommending to this committee, MC Fiber Services, uh, included some <laughs> updated uh, research and analysis we didn't have, including willing to put uh, boots on the ground and go look road by road at installations of broadband to verify uh, service areas, which is one of the things we are missing. We've been relying entirely on town reporting, uh, which is putting a lot of burden on those town committees and, and some of the towns don't have formal committees doing that type of local survey work. So this would help us fill in a gap uh, as we look towards the near future where the funding at the federal and state level and through congressional districts will all be coming to a head in the next uh, three to six months. So we want to be prepared for that, uh, relying on the county or the federal or the state to do mapping. And I say state or federal, we're going to do our own. Um, might take a year or more, and this is a eight-week program to get us up to stuff and be prepared to be proactive when the financing is clarified. So uh, 
we as a broadband subcommittee have recommended this vendor to the EDC? Uh, the way this would work is that uh, CEDC would contract with uh, the vendor and CEDC would then contract with the county to provide this service. And so in essence, M MC Fiber Services would be our subcontractor. Uh, this way it positions the uh, project to be eligible uh, for possible federal reimbursement when those funds are allocated. If the county contracted directly, uh, it's question, the question is whether it would be considered uh, a, a reimbursable expense or not. Um, we, this project or this proposal is for $30,000. It's an eight week uh, uh, time frame, as Supervisor Riley indicated. Uh, the other two projects are uh, 10 to 12 months, and they were uh, pricing was above $60,000 uh, for each of them. So I think the consensus of the uh, members of the committee, which includes uh, individuals other than in addition to supervisors, as well as the supervisors on the committee, uh, recommend that we go with MC Fiber Services and uh, that we have a resolution uh, from this committee uh, to the full board of supervisors that will prepare uh, by tomorrow uh, that you contract with CEDC to uh, undertake this study on your behalf. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to resolve to contract with the CEDC to subcontract with MC Fiber Services to prepare a resolution for the Finance Committee. I'll second it. All in favor? Sorry, right. I missed that. Anybody opposed? I think Michael had a question. Michael? Yeah, where are the, I, I missed the, where were the funds? The funds are coming from CEDC or are they coming from ARP? The, the way it's going to be set up, Michael, is we're looking to use stimulus money from the U.S. government, once that's available, uh, to, to fund this program ultimately. But we want to get it started now we don't know how long it's going to take before we can get that so we're going to have two, two contracts one between the county and cedc and the other one between cedc and mc fiber services All right i don't know mike are we going to be are you guys going to advance the money then we're going to reimburse no. or are we going to hold no, well once you contract with us we'll, we'll pay for it then you'll reimburse us okay but your con what you're approving is a contract with us to provide those services uh to be reimbursed at the end of the study. To answer your question, Michael, the county would be funding this contract with the CDC eventually. So ultimately it will be Columbia County money that pays for the uh, but, project. Uh, but you know, there's an element of faith here because I believe you would still have to vote on the, uh, that uh, at the time you release the funds. So. I, you know, I don't, well, okay. Yeah. I think the resolution should define that, Mike. I don't think it should be a leap of faith. I think the resolution, when you prepare it, should define that we are entering into a contract with okay. CEDC with the commitment that we are going to give you the $30,000 <laughs> upon receipt of the, the funds. Uh, well, I think, yeah, you, very, very, very definitely, Supervisor. I mean, the way you could word the resolution is that, you know, we're going to enter into a contract with CDC and we're going to pay them $30,000 and CDC is going to enter into a contract with MC Fiber Services and pay them $30,000. Okay. okay. Won't be a leap of faith because we'll have a contract. So the, the alternatives of the county would be defaulting on a contract and that would not be a good precedent. Yeah. And we so, don't want to make CDC upset with us. We trust you. We trust you. I know you're a good person and full of trust, Mike, but let's put it in writing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Chairman, you have a motion and a second. We had a, we had a motion and a second. We Michael, a motion a second. we all voted on it. I think, Michael, you had a question. Yeah. Okay. All right. So can we have the vote, please? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, one last thing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, there's been some requests. Uh, I think from Supervisor Schmidis that uh, we provide some baseline demographic data. And I can send to all of you again a uh, email that includes links that provide census data for each of your towns, as well as the county and the city uh, that uh, 
maintained by the Capital District Regional Planning Commission in Albany, uh, and as well as data that we uh, receive from Pattern for Progress. Uh, and uh, we could, uh, you know, do a, we're in the process of doing an update to the CEDC strategic plan as we come out of COVID to re redefine how we uh, can help businesses uh, the do the most we can for them. Uh, in addition to our loan programs and our technical services and working with each of the towns and, and the city. Uh, and we're, you know, putting some of that data together for a presentation to our board and we're, we're happy to share that. But I can also give you links where if citizens or, or even for your own analysis and, and uh, planning, uh, it can be helpful. And if you have questions for data that's beyond uh, what's uh, on these, uh, you know, prepackaged links, uh, let me know and we can get it from the, either the State Labor Department or uh, from the Census Bureau. Thank you, Mike. You know, one observation I had when you were talking about the number of homes that are for sale uh, it was last year was 600 homes. Now, um, how many parcels, do, well, how many properties does that represent, you know, as a percentage, not for today, but, you know, we have 5,000 properties, 7,000 properties. It's, I think it's there's 25,000 residential properties. I think when we were looking at broadband, so, but we okay. can we can narrow that down. I mean, sometimes. You no, know, that's fine. I was just wondering yeah. what percentage of the houses are for sale. Yeah. You know, in, in the county. Uh, well, because of shifting the demographics. Yeah. But thank we, you. For I know that, that we had uh, data from the county clerk's office uh, in the fall that showed. Uh, there are about 750 homes that were sold in uh, single family homes that were sold from January to September of last year. Okay. And 35% of those were out of the region. I mean, if you were coming from Catskill or Pittsfield or Albany, I didn't count you. But if you were coming from a, a circle, you know, 50 mile radius from, from here, I counted you. And 35% of the purchasers address, you know, the, the, uh, the grantees address was uh, out, of the, out of the region. Yeah, so that would represent about a three, three and a half percent number of homes countywide that were actually for sale during that time frame. Yeah. I don't know where that, where we sit compared to other counties, but that doesn't seem terrible to me. No. Okay. Does anybody else have anything from Mike? Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mike. Can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Um, second it. All in favor? Sherry had something. Sherry, oh, hold on Great. one second. There was something in the file um, Kelly had left for me, the Columbia Green Workforce Development Board reappointments for July 2021. Do those need to be done? Or are we having a meeting next month? Well, we're having a meeting in July. We didn't get this stuff. It wasn't, we didn't get this stuff yet. Okay, because this was dated March 24th. Oh. And it's reappointing um, John Rutke of Ginsburg's Deb Tuttle of Pre-TM, Scott Brazzi, Jim Lappin, and Susan Gallagher. Did we do that already? We haven't done that. I don't remember doing that. Let me ask you a question. One of those, one of those appointments in effect, July so 1? It says, um, it says the Columbia Green Workforce Board has five representatives that need to be reappointed for three-year um, three terms by July 1st, 2021. Can we do a special before the board meeting in June? That's entirely up to you. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, folks. I, we, this was not on your agenda. How do you feel about making five appointments right now? Would you Chairman, rather? can I ask a question? Is there a process where we interview or do we just reappoint? If, if the process is just that we're reappointing the five people, then I'm- We're appointing, we're reappointing those five. So I, I'm comfortable making that motion. Uh, okay, one second. Hold on. And there's just so you know, there's um, they still have several business representatives vacant at this time. So again, they're hoping to get some recommendations to fill this. So it is, I think, imperative that these people do get reappointed to the board. I, I, I don't disagree with you. This is the okay. first time hearing about it, Sherry. So okay, I, I didn't know that. Done. I'm sorry. So, um, so if they were comfortable reappointing those five individuals tonight, then. We have a motion. Can we have a second? I'll, I'll second it, and I'll also state that we'll try to put the word out for the June meeting if we can find additional representatives. We, we've gone through this before. Okay. Is there yeah, a thank process, you very much. 
is there a process through the county, like in the town we put out for letters of interest? Is there a process that we could do, make a motion to go out to through, through maybe through Mike Tucker to his business listing in Columbia County with? Yep, that's what we did last time. We did a posting on the county. We asked the CEDC to blast. Okay. Okay. Let us know. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the, these five appointments? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, would you, Sharon, would you mind just following up with this group and sending out that uh, that email so that everybody could actually absolutely. see what we just approved? Yes, absolutely. I'll get that out to you. I'll get that Can't out to you. appreciate that. Okay. okay. All right. Is there anything else, folks, tonight? Mike Tucker, do you need anything from us as far as reaching out to other businesses, or is that something you typically do and you kind I'll of- I'll coordinate it with uh, Sherry and Kelly. Awesome. Thank you. Now okay. I'll motion to adjourn. Okay. Yeah. I'll reaffirm the second. All, right. All in favor of adjourning. All right. Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Got that Elswaldo? <laughs>